Hey folks, it is July 26, Monday, and welcome to The Daily Word. Well, today I'm going to split hairs <laughs> semantically to make a point. I want to say we don't need revival in our day. What we need is an awakening. Because too much baggage comes with the word revival. I think it calls up images of a set of meetings led by a revivalist with falling and shaking and preaching and something dead coming alive. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what God wants is so much more than that. What God, what God wants, what, what, what is needed is an awakening of something that's been asleep. <clears throat> Overall, the body of Christ in our culture has been more deeply asleep than we realize. And we've settled for less than we've been aware. Well, listen, in the 1730s and 40s, beginning in Northampton, Massachusetts, the Holy Spirit broke out under the ministry of a very boring, very intellectual preacher named Jonathan Edwards. That move of God spread throughout what was then the English colonies on our East Coast and into Europe. Testimonies from those times when the, when the Spirit of God turned this nation around tell us that people, they, they, they tell us that people woke up to God. They became aware of and, and, and responsive to his presence. Testimonies passed down to us say that all anyone could talk about anywhere in the towns and on street corners, in shops, in homes, at work, was the things of God. In the culture of that day, they already knew all the doctrines. They, they knew the teachings. They knew the Bible because the schools in this country used the scriptures to teach children how to read. They knew the hymns. People went to church. But a great slumber had settled over the culture and moral compromise had taken root. It had become religion by rote that had lost its power and sin was everywhere. Spiritual slumber had taken hold. God sent an awakening and people became alert and responsive to his spirit. Repentance became the order of the day and the land came alive to God. They didn't call it the first great revival. They called it the first great awakening. We need an awakening today. You know, revival isn't even a word you'll find in scripture. Today, we hold a series of nightly meetings when somebody tries to work up the crowd and fill up the altar with people praying the sinner's prayer. And we call these meetings revival meetings, hoping, hoping that something dead will come to life. But what you find in Scripture has more to do with waking from slumber than what we think of as revival. And so that's what they called that first great move of God in America, the first great awakening not the first great revival or the first great move of God. People woke from spiritual slumber and became alive and aware. The next great move of God to hit America and revolutionize the culture came in the early 1800s, and they called it not the second great revival, but the second great awakening. The greatest missions movement ever to come from this nation was birthed out of that and untold thousands of people in many nations came to really know the Lord because of it. See, we don't need revival, we need an awakening. Revelation 3.1 To the angel of the church in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you're alive, but you're dead. Wake up. <laughs> See, there it is, there's the awakening. Wake up and strengthen the things that remain which were about to die, for I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. See, the problem is spiritual slumber. Spiritual slumber has several causes, but here's a key one. Idolatry and compromise with an ungodly culture that's created and fed by worship of something or compromise with something other than God. It's buying into a culture and a way of thinking and living that God did not author. Isaiah 29.10 For the Lord has poured over you a spirit of deep sleep. He has shut your eyes, the prophets, and he has covered your heads, the seers. Well, there's an answer in that verse for why there's been so much 
inaccurate or bad prophecy floating around in recent months and years. It's an answer to how so many got the election wrong and a lot of other issues. When the ways of the world invade the people of God, prophecy and the prophets get twisted up. Isaiah 29, 11, the entire vision will be to you like the words of a sealed book. In other words, you won't perceive what God is saying. You'll be insensitive to his ways. And it reads on, which when they give it to the one who is illiterate saying, please read this, he will say, I cannot for it is sealed. Verse 12, then the book will be given to the one who is illiterate saying, please read this. He will say, I cannot read. Then the Lord said, Because this people draw near with their words, and honor me with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me, and their reverence for me consists of tradition learned by rote. Well, that's why they're asleep. Insensitive to God. They're still thinking they're dedicated to him because they're still going through the religious forms. The words and the teachings are there, but they're, but they're asleep. They're not responsive to the presence of God, and so they, re they receive prophecy that's off. Romans 13, 9. For this, for this, quote, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And if there's any other commandment, it is summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Romans 13, 10. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. 11. Do this, knowing the time, that it's already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now, awaken from sleep. Did you catch that? Awaken from sleep. For now, salvation is nearer to us than when we believed. The night is almost gone, and the day is near. Therefore, let us lay, uh, lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Deeds of darkness, ignoring the ways of God and his principles and laws. These are causes of spiritual slumber. Deeds of darkness multiply. Love dies. God's people stop thinking and feeling and acting like God. They become non-responsive to him as a result. It's time to wake up to him. Chapter 13, verse 13. Let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife, and jealousy, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lusts. And so morality matters. Relational wholeness and love matter because these things preserve love and because immorality and relational brokenness dull everything about us that sets us apart from the animals, <laughs> awaken from sleep. I think if you read Romans rightly, and you get the then you get the idea that spiritual slumber results from failure to love. Whenever any body of Christ begins to focus on failures and separations and divisions and disagreements and offenses and criticisms, love fails, and then our sense of the presence of God is cut off, and spiritual slumber will result. So now, at this point in history, the moment is upon us to rekindle the flame. There was an old vineyard song decades ago with this line in it. O oh Lord, please light the fire that once burned bright and clear. It's never too late to wake up and walk in the calling and power of God. I find myself thinking about Joshua and Caleb. Joshua, Joshua 14, beginning at verse 8. I followed the Lord my God fully. Verse 10. Now behold, the Lord God has let me live. Just as he spoke these 45, 45 years from the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses when Israel walked in the wilderness and now behold I am 85 years old today. I am still as strong today as I was in the day Moses sent me as my strength was then so my strength is now for war and for going out and coming in. Joshua and Caleb stayed awake through the long delay of promise. Forty years. Forty-five years. It couldn't have been easy. Followed the Lord my God fully. It had to have been a fight. I followed my, the Lord my God fully. So again, we don't need a revival. We need an awakening across the body of Christ, across the generations. 
<clears throat> as a people and as individuals to follow the Lord our God fully. God, and here, here's something I understand. God has sent his spirit. That's a done deal. He's here. The problem with what we call revival and what seems like the delay of promise of the sending of revival has never been in the sending. The problem isn't in the sending. It has only ever been in the receiving. I'm not praying God send revival. I'm praying for an awakening in us at the level of spirit to receive. Father is calling. It's morning. The sun is up. Time to wake up. The time of our visitation. The time to rise up and reclaim all that is ours. All that God has given. The hand of God touching and lifting to wake us from every form of spiritual slumber and rekindle the hearts of revolutionaries who shed light wherever they go and who win a world of lost people in a time of crisis is upon us. God bless you all and let an awakening come upon the body of Christ in this land and let it awaken a nation. Amen.